Dutch cuisine? Does it even exist? Let's find out in this video. In this video, I'm going to try traditional Dutch snacks and give you some idea about Dutch cuisine. Now I'm at home with all the snacks I've bought. My boyfriend is behind the camera helping me film and hopefully finish all the snacks afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yes, stop, stop. Let's start with the first one, straw waffle. I made a short video where I shared that Dutch eat strop waffle like this because then the caramel melts and the waffle gets tastier. This video became the most controversial thing ever. Some Dutch say, yes, I eat it like this, and some said, I've never seen it before. So I'm aware that not everyone in the Netherlands does it, but this is so much better, so try it. While we are waiting for the strop to melt, a little bit of the history of strop waffle. Of course, they are from the Netherlands, but the exact history of their invention is somewhat disputed. They are believed to be originated in the city of Gouda, coincidentally with the cheese as well, Gouda cheese. So it feels like a lot of clever or hungry people lived in Gouda back in the days. The strop waffle was first made in the 19th century by bakers. Bakers would use leftover crumbs from the bakery to make thin waffle cookies and then fill them with a sweet syrup but back then it was rather a street food than a packaged product as it is now. Now we're going to try the waffle. Mm. I love strop waffle. It has this crispy waffle layers and the syrup in between. It's the most delicious Dutch snack ever. When I first moved to the Netherlands, I ate a lot of strop waffles, but at some point I realized that they're actually very calorie rich, so I had to scale it down. Since I've already mentioned Gouda, let's talk about Gouda cheese. This one tastes like an old cheese, so I'm gonna get this one. I picked out old cheese because I like complex and robust textures. From what I've seen, the Dutch would pick young cheese for their sandwich for lunch. I don't think I've ever seen a Dutchie eating out cuz for lunch at work, but surely you'll find it at restaurants or you can make it yourself. Why not? Obviously, the cheese is produced in Gouda and its origins can be tracked back to the 12th century. It actually has a very interesting history. I highly recommend visiting Gouda to learn more about it. This one I bought at Yamba because I didn't have enough time to go to the cheese market or to the like Sunday, Saturday weekend market where you can buy cheese of higher quality and it's much tastier than this. But for the purpose of the video, I bought all products at supermarkets like yeah, like Yamba and um, Albert Heijn. It's not actually very old. I thought it's uh, this cheese is much older. It's the taste is not as crumbly and intense as I anticipated because this cheese is 48 months old. So I anticipated that it would have a little bit of a more robust taste. But I think it would work really nice on a cheese palette with some wine, and it can be a great idea for a cozy evening during a winter season. Okay, maybe we need a bit more cheese to make it look nice. Hagenslag. I just made a video about Dutch breakfast and some of you suspected me for not using enough butter. So, here you go. And the bread is also toasted. So, I took everything into consideration. Hagenslag is a popular Dutch and Belgian chocolate sprinkle topping. It was created in the 20th century when the baker Gerard de Vries developed the concept of chocolate sprinkles and the Dutch later adopted it as breakfast. Foreigners usually don't really like it and I'm not an exception. Well, let me phrase it this way. If I were to stay with the Dutch family and they would make hagerslag for breakfast for me, I would gratefully eat it. But I would not make it for myself every day. Yeah, and I also think that there are healthier breakfast options. Okay, let's address an elephant in the room. I'm obviously not using white bread. I completely forgot to buy bread at all, so I had to go embarrass myself and ask my neighbor for one piece of bread. <laughs> Bitterballen. 
Bitter ballen are a popular Dutch snack that you will most likely see in bars and social gatherings. If you join a Dutch social event, you'll for sure find bitter ballens there. Preparing the bitter ballen and putting them in the oven at 220 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Their history dates back to the 19th century. They are believed to have been inspired by French cuisine. Yes, who knew? Specifically by croquettes, which were introduced in the Netherlands by the French. I then added five more minutes and bitter balling are ready. It's a meat-based snack, which is commonly served with mustard. I don't really want to know what's inside. Mm. But it tastes good. I really like bitter balling because of the crispy top but you really need to watch out while eating it because inside it's very hot. Kampusch is the most mysterious Dutch snack or dessert because nobody knows how to eat it. Even the Dutch seem to have mixed opinions. But the most common opinion I've heard is that first you take the top off and eat the bottom with the cream and after that you eat the top. Does the name Tampouche, by the way, remind you of something French? It's believed to be named after Admiral Tom Pouche, a character from a French story. And it's said to be inspired by a similar French pastry called Mille Fille. <laughs> I'll put the name somewhere here. The top, in my opinion, is the best part of the Tom Pouche. To me, Tom Pouche is something you either love or hate. Because I am generally not a big fan of cream, I would not choose Tom Pouche as my favorite dessert. So my boyfriend is going to gladly help me finish it. Next is Dutch apple cake. I think pretty much every nation has their version of apple cake and claims it to be originated from there. It of course makes sense because apples back then were available in many regions and I think different regions develop their own variations of apple cake. So the Dutch version typically has a rich butterly crust, a filling of sliced and diced apples, and a touch of cinnamon and other spices. It's also sometimes served with cream. I know that the best apple tart, as well as tampouche, you will get in a bakery, but for the purpose of this video, we got everything at Albert Heijn and Yamba. They actually have a very nice apple cake. I'd say apple cake is something very standard that almost everyone likes. So if you're not sure which dessert to bring to a party, apple cake is the most risk-averse choice. I like it. Really feel cinnamon. Drop is another Dutch snack that you either love or hate. I surprisingly like the taste. I would not have it every day because I simply don't crave it, but I really find the taste interesting. It's like a mix of sweet and tangly slash salty taste. Did you know that in the Netherlands, drop was adopted because doctors believed in its health benefits? So they were using drops against sore throats and digestive issues. Initially, drop was imported in the Netherlands, but as innovative and entrepreneurial as the Dutch are, they came up with ways to produce it here locally. Drop is something that you for sure need to have an opinion about. Do you like it or not really? If you still don't have an opinion about it, you should definitely try it. World known phrase here in the Netherlands is one drop a day keeps a doctor away. Or paracetamol. Oh, paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> Speculous. Yes, not speculose, because it's Belgium. In the Netherlands, we pronounce it as speculas. You probably know this cookie from the Sinterklaas tradition. These cookies are often baked and shaped into different figures representing Sinterklaas and his companion Swarte Piet. But we bought the usual shape of cookies. The origin of speculas can be traced back to medieval Europe. Initially, it was created as a special treat for festive occasions such as weddings, fairs, and holidays. They have a spicy aroma and crispy texture. I know that some Dutch like to dip them in their coffee or tea. 
Hmm. I once made a cheesecake with the bottom made of speculas and it was delicious. As a foreigner, you have to try this, because in the Netherlands there are a lot of other products with the taste of speculas. For example, macaroons, ice cream, coffee, etc. So get a pack of cookies to educate yourself whether you like this taste or not. Which other snacks or foods should I try? Let me know in the comment below and thank you so much for watching, it was fun!